Animation layers in Concept are the same as creating a new layer in an art program like Photoshop. You're adding a new piece of paper on top of your work to add extra details without the risk of ruining any of your work underneath it. Hi, I'm Skitty, and today we're going to go over everything you need to know to get animating with layers. If you've seen my tutorial on animating lip sync, then you've heard me talk in the past about using layers to apply generic lip sync shapes. We will get into how this works, but there are lots of other instances that layers are useful for as well, which we will need to dive into to grasp an understanding of how they work and when to use them or when not to use them. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever used animation layers and what you've used them for. I'd love to know. As I said before, animation layers are the same as adding a new layer in a digital art program. You wouldn't want to start coloring your artwork on the layer you drew your line art on because you might ruin or color over the finished lines. In animation, if you had, say, a finished walk cycle, but while your character was walking you needed to add a head turn, you wouldn't want to animate that on the same layer as the cycle, because you might ruin your existing keys. Adding that head turn on a layer is considered a non-destructive workflow, because it can be manipulated separately and deleted at any time without ruining the rest of your animation. So let's take this walk cycle example and add a head turn on a layer. On the bottom right of Maya, where we have our display layers, click the Anim tab next to it to bring up the animation layer view. When you first bring it up, it will appear to be empty, but Maya is lying to you. Or I guess more accurately, Maya is withholding information from you that it deems unimportant in an attempt to not overwhelm you. Everything you animate when you're not using layers is still technically being added to a layer. This layer is just hidden and it's called base animation. In order for this secret base to become visible, all we have to do is create another layer on top of it to deem that information as important. When we want to create a new layer, click on the Layers tab here to bring up our main layers menu. Now we have two options. We can click Create Empty Layer, meaning nothing we manipulate will be added to that layer. It will instead keep updating on the base layer. Alternatively, we can create a layer from Selected. Don't get confused here though, it doesn't add characters to the layer, it specifically only adds what you have selected. If you create a layer with the neck control selected, then the only thing on that layer is going to be that neck control. I'm going to go ahead and select the controls I need for the head turn. I'll need the neck controls, the eye direction controls, and the upper torso. Then I'm going to go into the layers tab and select create layer from selected. Now as you can see, our secret base layer showed up because Maya realized we need that information, and above that, we have our new layer, Anim Layer 1. Just like in a drawing software, it's extremely important to name your layers, especially in a studio setting, because you never know who might need to jump into your shots. It wouldn't be fair to leave them wasting their time trying to dissect how you set your shots up. Labeling your layers accurately with what's on each one will just give everybody less headaches. Since we're adding a head turn to this shot, I'm going to name this layer Head Turn by double clicking on the layer name. If we look to the right of the layer name, there's a big green circle next to our new one and a small red circle beside our base layer. This is telling us which layer is currently active. If I click down to the base layer, now that layer has the green active icon. If I deselect everything, the circles disappear, none of them are active. If we select a control that we didn't add to the new layer, like let's say her arm, notice the the active button stays beside the base layer no matter which layer we have selected. That's to show you that, hey, you may have the head turn layer selected, but you're still adding to the base animation layer. It's a good way to find out what's on what layer and where any new information is going to go. Also notice that when we select a controller that has been added to a layer, the transforms have this bluish green color next to them, but the controls without layer inputs don't. If we went the create empty layer route, we would need a way to add objects to this layer, right? Just select the things you want to add, go back to the layers tab, and select add selected objects. If you only want certain transforms to be editable on the new layer, hit the option box beside it, select the things you want, and hit apply and close. So let's get to making that head turn. Make sure you're on the head turn layer, and I like to lock my other layers just to make extra sure nothing can end up there accidentally. Even though our head turn controls have keys on the base layer, we have a nice clean timeline to work with on the new layer. So let's pick where the head turn is going to start and set a key. Then move down the timeline to where the transition will end and pose out the turn. Remember, you can always add more 
more controls to the layer if you decide you want to use them by going to the Layers menu. Now we decide where the turn will end and set a key, then middle mouse drag the key with our first position to the end of the turn to copy it, then hit S to set the key. Now we have Pose to Pose blocking on top of a finished walk cycle. We can go further and polish this head turn out, but it can be difficult to see exactly what's going on with the cycle animation getting in the way. The answer to this would be to mute the other layers so that we can single out the one that we're working on. The issue in this case though is that the base animation layer can't be muted or deleted. It always needs to exist. So what we'll have to do is duplicate the base layer so that we have an editable copy. With the base animation layer selected, go back up to the layers menu and select duplicate layer. Once we have two of the same layer, if you hit play you might be in for a bit of a shock. Layers by default are additive meaning they add on top of the layers below them. So if we have two of the same layer, our playback is double the values for that layer. We will have to go into our graph editor for the base animation and kill all of the keys on there. This will make the base animation layer blank. Now that everything in our scene is on an editable layer, we can hit this button here to turn the base off or mute. Now when we scrub the timeline, all we have is the blocked head turn, making it much easier to tween which I'll do right now. While I'm doing this, let's talk a bit about duplicating layers. Like I said, having two of the same layer doubles the intensity of the keys. But if that's your only intention for the duplicate, don't do it. You're better off doubling the intensity of your curves in the graph editor. There's a math equation to do that quickly for you, which I already discussed in the how to reverse animation tutorial, so I'll link that below if you want to check it out. An instance where you do want to duplicate the layer though, is if you want to try an idea that you're not sure if it's going to look good or may potentially ruin your animation. By duplicating the layer, you can mute the original layer and keep it around as a backup copy in case things go terribly wrong. Or if you have multiple ideas you want to test out, you can layer them and flip through the iterations to find out which version you like best. Also, muting layers to single them out is a clear and easy way to find any potential jank in your movements. Now that the polish is done on the head turn, let's unmute the cycle so we can watch it play together. We still get to utilize the generic cycle, but break it up enough to flow and feel natural. But what if after playing them together, you decide the head turn is too big, you only want it to go half as far, but you already perfected your keys? This is where the weight slider under the list of layers comes in. It works like a blending slider. Since this head turn layer is adding on top of our base animation layer, at a weight of one, the head turn layer is adding 100% of its key value on top of the base layer. As we shift the slider down, it will start to ease the keys off. Setting the weight to 0.5, it will only add half the value of the keys or go 50% the distance. We're about to get a little complicated for a minute, but the weight of your layers is also a keyable attribute. This is great if you need to break up a cycle, like stop and start it again. With the weight set wherever you want, hit this K button to the right of the slider to key it. If we go ahead and select something that is a part of the layer and open the graph editor, it will have an attribute with the layer name. This is where your layer keys go and we can tweak them like any other keys. We also have these two buttons above the list of layers which sets a key with the weight on zero and sets a key with the weight on one. Even though the example we used is for a walk cycle, these aren't the only types of cycles layers are useful for. If you have a character that's swimming underwater or floating in the air, you can make an ambient swim or hover cycle and paste it on a layer above your main animation. You can also use a layer to just add a single pose, which is perfect for game animation. Say you made an idle cycle, but you need 10 different contextual idle animations. By adding a new pose on a layer above your cycle, it completely changes it into a new cycle. There's tons more uses for layers, but before we get into that, let's dive into more layer tools first. I mentioned earlier that layers are additive by default meaning the layer adds on top of the layers underneath it. But there's another type of layer called override. This is a be all end all type of layer. Nothing underneath this layer will be visible, at least for the objects you add to the layer. You can create a new override layer just under where you add regular layers in the layers menu, or you can switch a layer between additive and override by going to the layer mode submenu. Back to the other buttons beside each layer, from left to right we have our lock button again, so you don't accidentally change things you don't mean to. Then we have solo layer. This mutes all the other layers, excluding the base layer remaining. 
remember, so all you see is the animation on the selected layer. Next we have the Mute Layer button to mute layers individually, and then we have Ghost Color Layer. Left clicking turns on ghosting, and right clicking brings up this color slider so you can change the color of your keys for each layer. This is another really handy reminder of which layer you are currently working on. We have two buttons here to shift the selected layer up or down in the chain, because remember, the upper layers are adding to the lower layers. And then we have two quick use buttons to create an empty layer and create a layer from selected. In the Show tab here, we have this neat option called Floating Window, so you can put the layer editor anywhere you want. Now let's talk about the features we skipped in the Layers menu earlier. We talked about adding new objects to a selected layer, but we can also remove them from here. Under Remove, we have Extract Selected Objects, which takes the object and removes it, but takes that control and any animation you might have given it on the current layer and creates a new layer out of it. Really handy if you want to change the weight on just one thing. Select Objects selects everything added to the current layer. We talked about duplicating layers, but we can also duplicate the layer without bringing the animation with it. Only the objects will be duplicated. Then we have Merge Layers. In order to use this, you'll have to shift select multiple layers, but as you can see, it has an option box next to Merge. So let's click that. We have a choice here which of the layers is merging into which, but the crucial option we're here for is Smart Bake. If this isn't selected when we merge our layers, it will bake all of our keys. This means that every single frame will have a key on it. Not very useful if we need to change anything, right? By hitting the checkbox next to Smart Bake, it will only put keys on the necessary frames. Extract non-layered animation for selected or all objects. Extracts animation from the base layer and creates a new layer out of it. Select All selects all of your layers. Select Branch selects all of the child layers to your selected layer, which we'll talk more about soon. Select Layer Node selects the node. Useful for having it appear in your graph editor. Export layer saves the layer as its own Maya file, which can also be done with a branch. Next is membership, which brings up a relationship editor so we know what is part of which layers. Then we have attribute editor, which brings up our familiar attribute editor for the currently selected layer. Next we can delete or empty the layer, or clean up by deleting any empty layers. Lastly, we have package into assets, which makes it easier to see your layer connections if you need to view them in the hypergraph. As many tools as that menu has, there's still a few tools left before we get back into talking about when you should even use layers. Earlier, I mentioned child layers. You've probably guessed it, but yes, layers can be parented. All you have to do to parent a layer is middlemost drag the child onto the parent. It's the same to unparent, just middlemost drag the child off. A parent layer can have as many children as you want. The weight of the child layer will be affected by the parent layer, and if you mute the parent, all of its children become mute. Now let's talk about a few more instances when you may or may not want to use animation layers. If you want to try something experimental, use a layer. If it's too crazy, you can always dial back the weight or scrap it. If you're at your job and a director gives you a note that sounds questionable or like maybe he or she is experimenting, use a layer. Directors do experiment and change their minds, and you're the one who's going to have to waste your time for it. That's just how it goes. Use a layer if you plan on using generic lip sync shapes. It's so much easier to finesse when you can just blend your existing shapes into the facial expressions that should already be present in your blocking. And don't use a layer if you don't need to. I know I probably just filled your head with tons of ideas and possibilities, but you also have to learn to be conservative with them. One or two layers here and there, cool, but as you keep adding more and more, Maya's gonna start liking you less and less until your scenes become barely usable because Maya can't handle your decisions anymore. So just have fun, but be nice to Maya. Leave a comment below if there's something you didn't understand. Like and subscribe if you learned something. Links to socials are in the description. And remember to always use a reference.